welcome back to New Chapters. My name is Sarah and if this is your first time joining me, I just want to say thank you for stopping by for this chapter of my life. I'm a hobby hopper so if this isn't the content you usually watch me for, I hope you enjoy this hobby as well and we'll stick around for today's video. Today we're going to be kidding up Winter Girl from Enablers Outpost. This is a Shutterstock licensed image and while we're kidding this up, I'll be answering some questions about diamond painting. Um, and this is, if you didn't see the unboxing, the kit that I will be uh, kitting up today. All right. I first saw this uh, idea about the questions on diamonds and washi um, in a whipping chat that Katie did that followed the 2023 Christmas premiere. She talked about the questions being from Anthony from Single and Placing, and he had asked other creators to join in on answering. Katie also added to the original question, so I'm answering a combination of Katie's Would You Rather and Anthony's questions that he had for the 2023 Christmas premiere. So both creators invited others to join in on answering these diamond painting questions. So um, I'm going to start with Anthony's best of 23 DP tag questions, but before we get into that, just kind of some housekeeping things. For this kit up, I'm going to be using this 7.5 millimeter washi tape. I just got a pack of it off of Amazon. I have a, let's see here, a Sharpie a twin tip fine liner. I'm going to be using the smaller side. Have a pair of scissors and then I have all of the drills already laid out in number order um, just because it'll make it easier for me to kit them up. So I also have some Elizabeth Ward trays over here. Um, I do have two sets. Um, I have one that just has this tiny container size. So these are what I refer to as the small size. Um, I have one that was the 82 count of these and then I have one that's the mix of this and the other three sizes. Um, just some tips on these Elizabeth Ward trays. Um, they are very securely fastened here. You might be able to hear it. Let's see, we'll do that one more time. So when it closes, it has that satisfying click. Um, I do find that they can be a little bit tricky to open, um, especially when you have longer nails. Right now I have some pretty short nails, but when they're longer, they're pretty hard to open up. Um, and even with short nails, it can be pretty painful to try to open these up by like grabbing it here at the bottom and pushing up with your fingernail. So I find it's easier to use the side of your finger right here to kind of get up underneath it. And then you can, let me see if I can get that on <laughs> tape here. So you can kind of pop underneath and then pull up just with your finger instead of using your nail. Um, and that way you don't accidentally rip your nail off when you're trying to use these. Over time, I do find my finger starts to get a little bit sore if I'm diamond painting a lot from it, um, but it's easier than again, using your nails. Um, also something that's neat about these trays or these containers, I should say, is if you do ever have an issue with getting drills like stuck back here in this back part, this top piece, of course, it's not going to come off for me because I'm trying to get it to come off. Maybe this isn't a container I've opened and closed as much here. Let me see if I can find a better one. Maybe I've used a little bit more. This one's pretty good and well loved in. Yeah, here we go. So after you've used the trays a couple times, it becomes easier to pop this top piece out. So if you ever find that you do get some drills that get stuck back here in this kind of um, support beam in the back, you can just pop this top off and then it secures right back into place. Um, there's like these three little prongs here. Um, I'm not sure if you can see them or not on the camera, but there's a little like three pronged hook back here that will catch. And you can slide it back in and it'll lock it back securely into place. Um, and then you can close it right back up. So um, another housekeeping item is I will be honest with you guys, I have been trying very hard to film this video for the last two weeks or so, and I keep running into issues with technology not wanting to cooperate with me. So I did actually start filming this the other day and got through the first 10 colors before my technology stopped working and I've been trying to troublesho troubleshoot since then. Um, so I do already have some of these containers finished. Um, and at least with the labeling. So this is kind of a overview of what it is that I'm going to be doing here. So this is the very first color. Um, I like to 
ideally use a sticker sheet that comes with the kit, but if you have a kit that doesn't have a sticker sheet, this is how I kit up. I use these Elizabeth Ward containers and then I do the DMC number on one side and on the other side, I'll do the symbol. So the symbol for the first color here is kind of this, I don't know, this upside down or sideways T. Um, so I drew that and then I also wrote the number for when I go to kit down, it'll just make it easier for me to add this to my 154 collection um, without having to reference the schematic necessarily or think too hard about it. It'll be really easy to find. And if for some reason I run out of this color, I know which color I'm looking for again without necessarily having to rely on the schematic, especially because depending on how I'm feeling, sometimes I will organize my symbols in order. So I'll put like all of the capital letters first and then all of the lowercase letters. So it'll be A to Z and then A to Z again. And then I'll do the numbers and symbols that are alike for me. Um, sometimes I leave them in DNC order. It kind of depends on how I'm feeling. I've done both though, um, so it just depends. But with all of that being said, I believe that's all of my housekeeping things out of the way. So I will go ahead and take this container that I already have the stickers on and I will be opening up this first bag. I will show you one thing I have learned recently is a kind of trick for opening up these Ziploc bags. Instead of having to take them like this and pull them apart and sometimes they don't wanna do that, you can actually pinch it between your fingers here and it'll open it for you instead. So you just slide it across that zip and it'll go ahead and open that bag really easy. All right, so I will go ahead and pour this first one into my container here. Hopefully I don't make too big of a mess. I did have a couple of stragglers in the uh, box when I opened this up, if you guys saw the um, unboxing video that I did for this. So I did find the homes for those when I filmed this the first time around. So I shouldn't have any loose drills in here, but you never know. And I don't want to add to that collection right now. So as I said, um, the questions that I'm going to be an answering from Anthony of Single and Placing are from his best of 23 DP tag. Again, unfortunately, because of <laughs> The technical errors, this is definitely going up pretty well into 2024 now. We're a little ways away from 2023. And I have to be honest with you, I did not diamond paint a lot in 2023. I did not participate in events or anything like that either. So I might not have answers for all of Anthony's questions, but I will try my best to answer the ones that I can. Uh, the first question from the 2023, I'm sorry, the best of 2023 DP tag is what is your favorite diamond painting kit of the year, completed or WIP? Um, WIP stands for work in progress. So if you have something you're working on, that can count as well. Um, so I would say that my favorite diamond painting kit of the year, um, I did not diamond paint a lot in 2023, to be honest with you. I did rediscover diamond painting this year, or this past year, I should say. Um, so I did... So I will say that um, I had a kit that I worked on, but it's from a company that I don't think actually legally licenses their artwork. So I don't really want to highlight the company themselves necessarily, but I will talk about the artist. Um, unfortunately, I don't think the artist actually does have any diamond paintings that are licensed from them. So I can't get any of their artwork legally licensed or from a legally licensed diamond painting shop, unfortunately. See if I can get all these guys in this little container without spilling them here. I know they'll fit in this one, but I think this is my max capacity for this color in this bag. All right. Uh, perfect. <laughs> Just barely got them in there. Let's see if I can get them closed up. I know this is the, the full capacity for this container here. Let's see if I can do this without spilling them or squishing anybody. Ah, perfect. Okay. So the artist that I um, enjoyed working on, which is the only artist technically I did any diamond paintings by in 2023, is um, Lenoid Afrimov. Um, he has really cool, colorful work. Um, I will say he is the first person I ever did, or the first artist I ever did a diamond painting from. Um, and I would not recommend starting with work um, that's similar to his as <laughs> if you've ever seen any of his pieces, they are incredibly colorful 
and kind of pixelated already just as paintings. Um, and so what that means for a diamond painting is that just translates to a lot of confetti. So I have never actually done a diamond painting kit that is not confetti heavy before, which is probably not a great place for a beginner to start, but it is where I started. Um, but that would be my favorite diamond painting kit of 2023 is definitely the kit that I worked on from um, Lenoid of Free Mob. Then the next question from Anthony's best of 2023 DP, DP tag is what is our favorite diamond painting event of the year? Um, as I said, I did not participate in any events. Um, I did not really pay attention to a lot of diamond painting um, things at the beginning of 2023. I know some of the DP um, events that went on in 2023 that I would assume are happening again in 2024 were things like drills and chills, uh, DP for vets, DP for pets, jingle drills, summer with the masters. There was a winter DP along. Um, and then I know that Diamond Art Club does a challenge. Um, I don't know what the 2024 challenge is. I do know that they are doing a challenge for 2024 as well. I believe it's like five different kits from Diamond Art Club that you would have to complete under certain circumstances um, and specifications in order to complete their challenge for 2024. Um, I don't know if I will try to participate in that or not. I definitely have enough Diamond Art Club kits that I'm sure I could manage to complete it if those were the kits I chose to work on. Um, but those were the 2023 events that I'm aware of. I'm sure there were more out there, but at least those were some of the ones that occurred in 2023. But again, I did not actually participate in any of those. Um, next question from Anthony is, what is the favorite kit that you worked on for an event this year? Again, I kind of answered that already. I did not do any um, diamond painting for any events this year or this past year, I should say. Next question from Anthony is, what is your favorite overall shop of the year? It can be big or small. So um, I do have a small shop that I want to talk about, but honestly, uh, I, I would think, I think I would be amiss if I didn't give my favorite shop of the year to Diamond Art Club. If you saw my um, stash video and my organization video, then you would have seen that I have 28 kits from Diamond Art Club and the truth is I probably obtained most of if not all of those in 2023 so I have to say just based on the sheer number of kits that I've purchased from them um, they have to be my favorite diamond art shop for the year of 2023 um, just based on that fact alone and I'll be honest with you I've purchased a handful of additional kits since then and I have my eye on a couple of more before I am banning myself from being able to buy any more for the time being. Um, so they definitely have to go, they have to be included as my favorite shop for 2023 for sure. Um, favorite artist of the year is the next question from Anthony's list. So I would say that again, I don't really have any artists necessarily that I worked on from 2023 that are my favorite, so I'm just going to name a couple of my favorite artists. I'm not sure that all of their work necessarily um, has come out in 2023, but some of my favorite artists for sure are Peggy Collins. Um, I have a couple of her stained glass flower pictures. Um, I'm really looking forward to those. In fact, um, one of her pieces, I believe it was called stained glass flower garden. Um, I loved it so much that I purchased it, didn't realize I had purchased it, and had put my name down on the wait list on the uh, Diamond Art Club app to be notified when it came back in stock. I had been eyeing it to purchase it, apparently for the second time, because I did not realize I had already purchased it once. I will say that's something I've learned recently is I typically use the Diamond Art Club app if I'm making purchases. And, um, I noticed that there's a difference between the app and the um, the website. If you actually go to their website, it tells you on there whether or not you've purchased a kit before, which is a very handy um, bit of information that unfortunately you don't get on the app if you go to purchase or look at a kit. It doesn't tell you that you've already purchased it. So I wish that was a feature that they could potentially bring to the app. Um, just so we don't accidentally buy a kit that's already in our stash, like I almost did. 
Um, but so Peggy Collins is one artist that I really love in 2023. Um, another artist that I really love is Dakota Dittweiler. Um, as you saw in my stash video, I have a couple of her pieces that are from her Kraken series. Um, I think that one of them is What Lies Beneath and the other one I have is Dimensions. Um, so I really like her artwork as well. See if I can talk and write here at the same time. Probably not. Um, but I really do like a lot of her pieces that she has with Diamond Art Club at least. Another artist that I like is Randall Spangler. In fact, he is the reason that I even started working um, on Diamond Art Club kits, or I guess I shouldn't say working on them, but started collecting Diamond Art Club kits, um, is his Dragonlings. I just think they're adorable. They're definitely the thing that caught my eye first from Diamond Art Club, and I have a whole bunch of them on my wish list, but I actually truthfully haven't bought that many. I think I have one Randall Spangler in my collection right now, which is a little funny since that's the, he's the reason that I even started looking at Diamond Art Club to begin with is because of the his kits and I don't even have very many of them compared to the rest of my stash. Let's see if I can get all this in this one container. Should have paid attention to how many whoop, how many grams were in these bags before I started pouring because I'm not sure that I can fit all nine grams. Seven was kind of my max. Let's see if I can get all these little guys that flew out there. All right, um, another one of my favorite artists from 2023 is um, Richard Lorenz. He does a lot of um, bird paintings is the specific, um, kind of like kooky, funny bird paintings. They're not necessarily realistic bird paintings um, on Diamond Art Club's website. I know he just had a piece that released this morning that sold out, I think almost immediately, not quite as quickly as a couple of the other uh, pieces that were launched today or released today, but he did have one that released pretty quickly. Let's see if I can manage to get this closed. I might have to upsize to another container. Not even sure if you guys can see how uh, overflowing this is. <laughs> Let's see here. Can I get it? Get it closed. Ooh. Oh, just barely. There's not even room for them to wiggle in there. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear. Compared to, uh, let's see, this is my seven gram. This is the one I thought was my max. <laughs> definitely filled that one to the brim. Should definitely go in a slightly larger container. Whoops. Um, <laughs> this one's only six grams. So this one should definitely fit in one of those small ones. Um, but anyway, yes, Richard Lorenz is another artist that I've really enjoyed this year or this past year. Um, a new artist to Diamond Art Club, so I guess this is technically a 2024 um, artist, but I'm adding it in this video anyway, um, is Leon Divinis, I believe is how you say his last name. Um, his artwork, based on what I can tell from the two releases they put up on the Diamond Art Club website, is very similar to... Um, the artist I was talking about at the very beginning that I like, um, who is, um, let's see, Lenoid Efremov. Um, it was kind of similar to his work in terms of the colors, at least, having a whole bunch of colors in his artwork. Um, but it also kind of reminds me of Vincent Van Gogh with the sort of stroke work that he has um, for his paintings. So it's a similar kind of like the Starry Night-esque vibe just with a lot more colors so I really like his work I haven't bought any of his stuff yet but um it is on my wish list from Diamond Art Club as well let's see this one is our 12th color in this particular kit and then another artist that I've really enjoyed this year is Mandy Manzano um I think a lot of people really like her pieces and kind of the coloring book almost like effect they have. Unfortunately, some of the pieces that I really love by her um, are a little bit on the smaller side from Diamond Art Club, and that just means that some of the details of them get lost, which is unfortunate, but I do love a couple of her pieces um, that they have on there right now. I have a couple, again, also on my wish list by Mandy Manzano. 
but unfortunately there are a couple that I just won't see myself buying simply because there just isn't enough. They're not big enough to show the details in the background that I really love about the pieces. But of course I wouldn't want them to make them any bigger because then they would be huge pieces and it would take forever to complete. Um, but they're still beautiful pieces and I love that artwork and that style of artwork. Let's see. Next question from Anthony is, what is our favorite moment from another content creator or video this year? So um, I have to say that I don't necessarily have a favorite moment per se from anybody, but I do have a couple of content creators that I wanted to mention here. Um, so I'm kind of going to do groups of two. So I have my first two that I want to mention just simply because they were the creators that first um, that I first saw when I started diamond painting like five years ago now. Um, I just wanted to say that I do love the channels of Rachel Ray and Mrs. Coffee. Um, I have not watched their videos, to be honest with you, as much recently. But when I first started diamond painting, I mean, they were the reason that I learned how to diamond paint. Um, I was seeing ads and stuff for diamond paintings. I think I had bought one. But when I was first learning how to diamond paint and like looking up tutorials and things like that, they were definitely the two content creators that I watched almost exclusively at that point in time. Over the last six to 12 months, I would say that my favorite um, creators have been definitely Diamonds and Washi, as well as Diamond Painting Anonymous. Um, I really love watching both of their videos. I'm still actively watching both of their uh, channels as well. Really love the videos that they put out. Um, then more recently, like since December, there are two other channels that I have started watching that I really enjoy. And those are uh, Zoe Delaney and Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. Um, I've really been enjoying the content that they've been producing as well. So those are six different channels um, with content creators that I really enjoy with diamond painting content. Next question here is what is our favorite small shop of the year? So this was a place that they said we could talk about small shops specifically in case a small shop wasn't our favorite of the year. As I said, I kind of had to give my favorite shop of the year to Diamond Art Club just simply because of how much money I've spent with them in 2023. Um, but my actual favorite shop or favorite product perhaps is definitely from um it's firefly diamond art i love their trays um specifically i bought the element tray which has like an interchangeable base on the bottom so instead of just having the three rows or not the three rows the the rows of straight lines all the way across the bottom of the tray they actually have like interchangeable base plates that allow you to be able to um, use either the standard lines. They have one that's just for single placing. So the entire thing is just like square grids. So the entire tray is gridded off. So if you like single placing or if you're doing a very confetti heavy section, you can just get the single individual drills um, lined up for you really neat. I think it would also make it really easy to identify any trash drills or drills that are either too big or too small so that you can have a little bit more consistency for your um, diamond painting drills that you actually are placing on your canvas. And then they have a third tray that comes with the, or a third bottom I should say, that comes with the tray that allows you to, it's like their multi-placing tray. So it automatically when you shake it out allows you to have some that are single places there's two three four five six I think it goes all the way up to ten where they're already set up in those rows for you so there's another grid it's just not a one by one grid there's different sizes of lines so that you can um, diamond paint from however many you need for your multi-placing but just knowing that like this line has six, you don't have to think as much. You don't have to count them out. It's just built in for you already on the tray, which I think is awesome. Um, I also noticed when I was kind of doing some research for this particular video that they have a couple of more versions of that tray. Um, so they have like a standard size and then they have a mini. And then they've recently released their Element S, I believe is what they've called it. 
uh, yeah, an Element S tray. And it is the Element tray. They both, all of those still have the same like bottom um, with the interchangeable base plates, but the S has a side pour spout instead of the one that's in the center that's fixed. It has the Firefly Diamond Art um, like swivel spout on it. So that is definitely the small shop that has been my favorite of 2023. And then um, the next question from Anthony is, what is our favorite video that we uploaded this year? Um, as I said, obviously, I don't have a video from 2023 that I have uploaded um, that is my favorite. I would say that for 2024, at least, my favorite video so far has been my stash video. You guys seem to have really enjoyed watching that, so I appreciate all of the likes and comments and subscriptions that I've gotten from you guys um, based on that video. But it was fun to do it, and it was also helpful, again, primarily so that I could recall what my, what my stash contained and what paintings were in it, so I didn't buy duplicates. Um, next question from Anthony is, what is our biggest diamond painting letdown of the year? So this one is definitely <laughs> a kit from Diamond Art Club for me. Um, so I believe around Thanksgiving or maybe beginning of December, Diamond Art Club did a release of quite a few um, like Christmas and holiday sorts of kits. One of them in particular was called Snow Cabin Ornament. It was by Eau Claire Studio. Um, and I was making a purchase and I looked at that kit and I was like, no, it's okay. I'm getting a couple of other Christmas kits. Like, I really don't need this one. Like, I like it, but like, I don't love it enough to purchase it. Well, turns out I couldn't stop thinking about it, so apparently I liked it a little bit more than I was willing to admit originally. Um, and so by the time I went back, of course, to purchase that kit, it had sold out. So then I was waiting and waiting and waiting. I put my name or my email down on their notification list, kept waiting for it to come back, and it did not, it did not, it did not. <laughs> Um, the win, I guess, of 2024 is that when it did come back in early January, I was able to snag it before it sold out again. Um, but man, Diamond Art Club certainly has that FOMO, that fear of missing out down pat. The limited edition, or you don't know if this is coming back, or, <laughs> you know, here's the amount we have, and once it's gone, it's gone, sorry. <laughs> that is definitely a I don't want to miss it sort of fear. Um, that I certainly have experienced from Diamond Art Club kits, which is part of why I'm like, I need to make one last final big purchase and then delete the app and walk away for a little while because I cannot keep buying kits. I cannot afford to keep buying kits. Um, but that was probably my biggest letdown of 2023, which luckily for me at least has gone ahead and resolved itself in early parts of 2024. So I do have that kit now and at some point I'm sure I will be showing it um, it was not a part of my stash video because I received it after I had already filmed and uploaded that one, but I do have it now for the future of a diamond painting stash video. Um, next question from Anthony's list is, let's see here, what is the biggest lesson that you learned in crafting this year? So kind of goes back to what I was just talking about for me, at least. Um, my biggest lesson that I learned was definitely the fact that there is a difference between um, collecting diamond paintings and completing diamond paintings. Um, as I said, I bought probably most of the diamond paintings that were in my stash video in 2023, and I completed the, the piece I completed from the cheap kit was um, like a, a triptych. So it had three different canvases that were all one image that were divided up. So technically I completed three diamond paintings, um, one image over three canvases, but that's all I completed for the year. So I definitely, definitely am uh, not completing nearly as many kits as I am buying. So that is probably the biggest crafting lesson that I've learned this year is that I, uh, need to actually complete the kits and <laughs> that it is an addiction to both have and complete the kits and I need to be prioritizing completing more before I'm buying more. But um, that is the end of Anthony's questions. 
from his, let's see, let me make sure I say it right here. That was from his um, best of 20, best of 23 DP tag. Keep wanting to say best of 2023 and that's not quite right. <laughs> But it's best of 23 DP tag. And then Katie's questions from Diamonds and Washi. These are her would you rather questions. So I'll go ahead and answer her questions as well here. So her first question is square or round drills? So um, I didn't specify for this one since I talked about it in the uh, unboxing of this kit. But this Enablers Outpost Winter Girl kit is a round diamond kit. And it will actually be my first ever round diamond kit. Um, so when I started diamond painting, after, you know, reading the things online about squares being harder, but their, their effect is better or pays better, like it's worth that effort, I kind of fell down into the rabbit hole, partially also because I think just in my personality, I kind of took it as a challenge when they were, <laughs> when people were like, squares are so hard, they're so much harder than rounds. I wouldn't start there if you're a beginner. And I was like, mm, try me. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and start with some squares because if you tell me that it's too hard for me to complete in my first diamond painting, then I'm gonna prove you wrong. And unbeknownst to me, I also was getting, you know, confetti heavy kits, which at the time, I don't really think people were saying don't do confetti heavy kits. Um, but I definitely was unaware of how much like of an undertaking it would be for me to get a confetti heavy square kit for my very first diamond painting kit that I completed. Um, so I can't really answer the question actually as to whether I prefer rounds or squares because this kit that I'm kitting up right now is going to be my first round kit. I have never completed a round diamond painting kit before. I've only ever done squares. So by default, I guess I would say that rounds are my favorite, um, but that's not necessarily, rounds are my favorite. <laughs> no, that squares are my favorite by default. Um, but that's only because I've never done a round kit to know otherwise. Um, the next would you rather from Katie is snack size or large kits. So again, I have done a like, if you combined all the canvases, a pretty large kit that was the triptych that I just completed um, at the end of 2023. But I would say that I've never actually done a large kit before. Um, and I'm not really even sure that this kit by Enablers Outpost, which is a 60 by 80 centimeter drill field, um, it's probably a medium to large kit, but I know it's by far still not the largest sort of diamond painting kit that you can purchase. Um, I don't think I've really done any large kits per se, so I would have to say that I've only ever done snack size. I definitely am intrigued by the idea of larger paintings. I'm not sure that I wanna do huge paintings like Train of Dreams or um, there's a Firefly Randall Spangler one too that I know is really like long. I think he has a castle one that's pretty long as well. Pretty narrow, but still a pretty long um, diamond painting. I do have Reading Tree, which I know is pretty big. Again, a Randall Spangler piece. So eventually I'll have to start working on a fairly large diamond painting. But as of right now, I would say snack size kits are probably what I've done most of, perhaps all of. So those would probably have to be my favorite, but I think I'm gonna find a sweet spot once I start doing more diamond paintings with kind of that middle ground kind of kit. Let's see here, let me make sure I'm pulling the right numbers next. All right, um, the next question from Katie is do you have or prefer one whip, so one work in progress or multiple works in progress at a time. Um, I would say that, again, based on my previous experiences, I kind of have to say that I prefer working on one kit at a time, but um, I do think I would actually enjoy working on multiple kits to kind of help prevent burnout and keep me a little more motivated to keep diamond painting on a regular basis. Let's see if I can draw myself this symbol. It kind of looks like a like Mercedes-Benz logo. <laughs> See if I can draw it well enough that I know what it is <laughs> when I go to diamond paint. Um, but I would have to say then one whip has been my norm, but I would like to maybe try working on multiple whips at a time. Um, again, to kind of help with burnout and just keep me a little more engaged in the process as I go along. 
Um, especially now that I have round kits and square kits, it might be nice to have one round kit and one square kit going on at any given time. Let's see here. We are 18 colors through of our 37. Um, so we're getting almost halfway <laughs> through with this. The next question from Katie is, do you prefer to work on pieces that are artworks of landscapes or of people? So the majority of the paintings that I, I have completed before are some sort of like not necessarily like flower landscape, but like cityscape sort of artwork pieces. Um, I do really enjoy those. I have purchased a variety of things since um, getting started in diamond painting. I haven't completed any like portraits or like close up of faces or anything like that or anything that's like people are the primary focus. Um, but I do have a couple of kits that I'm really looking forward to doing that are that way. I thought for a long time that I wasn't going to enjoy the like portraits and like pictures of like a girl doing whatever. Um, sort of like this one, like the Enablers Girl or the Enablers Outpost Winter Girl piece. Um, something like that when I first started diamond painting, I would have kind of turned my nose up at and wouldn't have wanted to complete um, because I just didn't love the idea of a portrait piece, but as more artwork has come out and as I've um, looked at more diamond art, I really do enjoy a lot of the portraits as well. I'm going to go ahead and I used a, let's see, one of my small containers here, but I'm actually going to grab a medium sized container for this one based on its size, which is the grams here at the bottom. I'm going to want a bigger <laughs> bigger container for it if I want all of these in one container. Um, the next question from Katie is, would you rather listen to audiobooks or TV shows while you're crafting? Um, so I don't listen to audiobooks, but I do listen to podcasts. Um, I also watch a lot of YouTuber whip and chats while I'm working on diamond paintings as well. Um, but I'll also watch like TV shows and movies. So I really... And sometimes I just listen to music, honestly. Um, so I, I like all of them. But if I was going to pick anything in particular, I would probably pick um, podcasts are my favorite thing to listen to. Especially if I'm trying to actually complete a decent chunk of some sort of painting. Um, <laughs> because otherwise I end up staring at my screen more than I'm working on my diamond painting. And then it goes, like takes like twice as long to do a section. <laughs> because I'm watching my movie or my TV show or even the whip and chats <laughs> instead of working on my canvas and focusing on my canvas that's right in front of me. So again, podcast, probably going to have to be my answer to that question. Ooh, man, that J did not go very well. <laughs> Might have to go back after the video <laughs> and make that a little clearer for myself. All right. Next one is, do you prefer a basic toolkit or all of the upgrades? So I was just using a basic toolkit for a very long time. For several years when I was diamond painting, um, I was whoops, only using the basic toolkit that came with the kits. Um, I will say I am probably a little bit strange in the fact that the very first, like when I first started diamond painting, again, keep in mind this is on a square kit, um, when I first started diamond painting, I did not enjoy the like wax buildup that would happen from the wax in a kit. Um, so I very early on stopped using the pins and the wax from the basic toolkit and I just used tweezers. So when I first was, um, like my very first diamond painting I did, I completed completely single placing squares with tweezers across the entire painting. And truthfully, I think that's still my preferred method. Um, I have in this last year kind of experimented and gone back to trying diamond painting pens. I still don't like the wax that comes with the kits. I think that it leaves too much of a residue for me and it just drives me bananas when it's on the drills still. So I use like, um, basically the equivalent of blue tack. It's not actually the blue tack, blue tack. I think it's like a, I think it's like the duct tape brand blue tack. <laughs> it's just, just a poster putty. Um, 
because I find that it doesn't stick to the drills or if it does it's really easy for me to just peel off it peel it off it's very stringy if it gets stuck to the drills um it's not like a residue that it leaves behind it's just like a chunk of it will come off but um I single placed with tweezers when I first started and I actually I like the sharp pointy tweezers a lot better for like picking up and for placing but the problem I have is I'm when I place with tweezers, I tend to uh, like push down on the center of the drill. And I don't know if it's because I've been using cheaper made drills that aren't high quality or what the issue is, but I definitely have um, like dented the top of my drill because I push down in the center to like secure it into place when I'm done with it. So the sharp pointy tweezers are actually very ineffective for that. Um, so I kind of preferred the cheaper tweezers just because they don't leave a dent because they aren't sharp and pointy at the end. Um, but again, they're not as effective in other capacities, even like picking them up. I find it's easier to pick it up with the sharper tweezers. It's just harder for me to secure it in place, I guess. But I do probably have to say I prefer an upgraded kit. At this point, I've purchased my own trays. I've purchased some diamond painting pens. Um, I purchased upgraded single placers like the stainless steel tips and stuff from like Diamond Art Club. So I would probably have to say that I prefer a um, upgraded toolkit over a basic one. All right, let me actually write a number here and draw a symbol so I can keep moving <laughs> my kit up. Apparently I'm very heated about whether I prefer a uh, basic toolkit or an upgraded one. Let's see, that nah, looks good enough on my spiral. All right, next question from Katie is, do you have a big stash or a small stash? So I would say, based on my stash video, um, and I guess it's more of a, would you prefer a big stash or a small stash, right? So I would say I don't have a small stash for sure, but I wouldn't say I have the largest stash out there either. Um, but would I prefer to have a bigger stash or a smaller stash? I think, I think the side of me that does diamond paintings wants a smaller stash, <laughs> but the side of me that's addicted to buying diamond paintings wants my stash to keep growing forever and ever. <laughs> so I kind of fall in between. Um, I think having kind of that medium sized stash is nice though. Gives you a little bit of opportunity to choose a kit that you're like feeling in the moment. You don't have to necessarily um, worry about like, oh, I don't have, like, I'm, I'm in the mood to do a landscape, but I don't have a landscape right now. Or I'm in the mood to do a portrait, but I don't have a portrait kit right now. Um, so I like having kind of that medium kit that, or that medium size stash that gives you options to choose from. But at the same time, if you end up with too many options, eventually you get to the point where you kind of have that, like, choice paralysis. There's so many choices, you just can't pick any of them. <laughs> So I'd say, truthfully, I probably don't want a big kit or a big stash or a small stash. I kind of want that in between, that perfect kind of a middle ground to choose from. Let's see here. So we got, we are now on number 21 here. I really like the colors of this kit. I like all of the blues. That's part of what drew me to doing this kit um, next is just all of the blues. Blue is definitely my favorite color, so. And unfortunately, this is where my technology cut out. I lost storage space on my phone, so I had to stop filming and transfer that file so I could film the second part of this kit up. So there will be a second video where I answer the rest of Katie's Would You Rather questions, and I also answered some of my own that I created. Um, you can find links for the products that I talked about in this video down below as well as links to the channels that I mentioned um, enjoying on YouTube. There will also be links directly to Katie's and Anthony's channel since those are their questions that I was answering today. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching till the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. If you guys liked the video, please like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you want to answer some of these questions yourself, go ahead and answer them in the comments. 
and I will have the questions listed down below as well as in the next video so you can answer them on both or either one, whichever you guys prefer. Um, if you have any additional questions, please leave those down below for me as well and I will try to answer them. Thank you guys again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.